Hello all, Rick here and today's video is an expansion on last week's topic of the Soong type androids with a look into their nitty gritties. That sounds so wrong but I've said it and that's the take I'm going with. We're going to be looking at the technical specs of, specifically, Data and his capabilities as well as how that compares to current day tech for a bit of fun. The information in this video comes from the Starfleet technical manual as well as numerous LCARS displays from the actual episodes, or at least what I could make out of them. So there is also some assumptions being made with his inner workings, which I will specify as such. Besides, within the context of the series, Starfleet engineers are still trying to ascertain exactly how Data operates, as Dr. Soon was a reclusive genius who made no effort to share his research, so I'm being lore appropriate. Also, last video I stated that the episode A Measure of a Man was in 2367, which is incorrect as many of you pointed out, and was in fact in 2365, thank you for saying so. So, Data stands at 178cm tall and is composed of numerous materials, giving him a weight of around 100kg. His physical body contained 24.6 kilograms of tripolymer composites, 11.8 kilograms of molybdenum cobalt alloys, and 1.3 kilograms of bioplast sheeting, while his skull was cortinide and duranium. Thank you, Memory Alpha. Real world talk now. Molybdenum is often used in alloys, including various steels to form a more robust metal and has a relatively little expansion or contraction in temperature fluctuations. Combining it with cobalt seems to reduce the density and create a super alloy. So when Data says that he is built to withstand high pressure, he isn't exaggerating. As for duranium, this is a Starfleet alloy used in hull plating which too is, you know, rather sturdy. Data seems to be built around an endoskeleton which provides his basic form, but unlike us fleshy meat things, his skeletal structure houses many pivots and microhydraulics that power his movements. For us, our motor functions are manipulated by muscle, pulling and contracting to drag the skeleton around, whereas the android's locomotion comes from the skeletal frame itself. Over this he does appear to possess a sort of muscle-like sinew, but these may simply aid in fine motor control or perform a completely unrelated function. This is how modern robotics are designed too, the complexity of fabricated sinew and muscle being often too complex a system to create, although it has been done before with even organic tissue over a skeletal frame. Another problem of modern robotics that is being overcome is the sense of balance that a machine needs to operate, especially on two legs. One commonality in Data's design is that Soong went out of his way to mimic the human body where possible, but not to the extent of simply recreating it out of artificial parts like say a Battlestar Galactica Cylon. For example, Data's main power source was located within his chest cavity, roughly where a heart would have been located in a human. I guess this is one of the most protected areas on a humanoid body, but it didn't need to be slightly offset from centre, like a human heart. He also has a gullet and a stomach approximation that can consume food and presumably desynthesize it in the same way as a replicator, as I couldn't find an example of him producing waste, although he does contain a nutrient processing and distribution system. He was also designed with a sense of taste, able to analyse a compound in the same faculties as a person, but lacked any emotional preference for flavour until the installation of the emotion chip. He also has a respiratory function designed to funnel heat away from his core components, but does also contain a cooling fluid that is likely pumped throughout the harder to reach circuitry. Perhaps the hot air is expelled with his breath. He doesn't need to breathe however to function, as he has been seen operating underwater and in a vacuum, with no permanent damage. So it's possible that his thermal regulation is perfectly fine without this added function, at least for a time. He also has a circulatory system that pumps a conductive fluid around his body, and must have had a series of nerve-like sensors that can detect ambient environments and the pressure of being touched, evident from everyday interactions among him and his peers. His artificial skin is mostly waterproof and durable, but not as strong as his frame, as seen from the number of scrapes and damages he has taken throughout the series. 
Once, he sank into a lake and had to be drained by Geordie LaForge, and later installed a flotation device to overcome this inconvenience. He also has many subdermal microhydraulics that act as the fine musculature needed for a fully animate face, and over time can allow this sheath to mimic ageing. In theory, this could be easily reverted as his operational lifetime is theoretically infinite. He can grow a beard and alter the length of his hair, as well as alter its level of pigmentation, and even has a pulse as lubricants are pumped throughout his body. His eyesight is based in the visible light spectrum of humans, but does possess an infrared mode and possibly others as well, and he also has the ability to detect the molecule of substances in the air through smell. All this sensory data is located, much as a human's, in the head which also retains its own power supply, though likely far more limited in power than his central core. Most of his body can be disassembled and stored away, and so long as it's not damaged, a rebuilt data would return to function as normal. These points of disassembly seem to be located around the areas of his pivot points, such as his elbow, waist and neck, and as such could be considered the weakest points of his body. He also has a deactivation switch that would simply cut his power supply, located in the back and to the side of his spine, approximately where the ribcage ended and beneath the skin. It could even be set as a timer to reactivate him after a certain period. A single phaser shot to this switch would also likely trigger it. Being mechanical in nature and constructed of firmer materials than us humans, he could not only survive greater kinetic impacts, but exert greater strength. We see him effortlessly lift an anvil with one hand, and from estimates, I'd guess it was around 260 pounds or 118 kilograms. Not quite superhuman to lift this amount, but certainly without effort. We have also seen him overpower Borg and Klingons, two very physically capable species, and even bend a par steel bar in demonstration of his power a feat even more ridiculous than it first seems. He also held a 1937 Dodge D5 sedan stationary while it was attempting to run him down, which apparently has a brake horsepower of 87, about on par with a 2017 Ford Fiesta trying to drive over you. We have never seen an actual strength limit mentioned in the show, but suffice to say he does have one, even if it would be his own body giving out first. He has a mental storage capacity of around 100 petabytes or 2,200,022.2 recurring Fallout 76 Day 1 patches. This seems to be enough to store the logs and select memories from all of the inhabitants of Omicron Theta, his colony of origin, as well as support his continued evolution. Data could process information at much faster rates than an organic, allowing him to read and observe things at incredible speeds, as well as have information directly uploaded to his neural net. The layout of the positronic brain is the biggest mystery of the Zoom type android, and its capabilities constantly being tested throughout the show, with Data having no qualms about experimenting on himself with the oversight of his friends. Although, from how it is described in function, it appears to create connections and anticipate events in much the same way as a human's does. For example, when asked if Data considers people as friends, he does state that while he lacks an emotional investment in people, the presence, actions and interactions of certain people build preferential pathways in his mind, and that their absence causes him to almost miss them. If his mind does store memory and work like an artificial version of our own, then this explains the adaptability and creativity that it afforded him, even able to indulge in recreational activities such as painting, composing, acting and reading. As of 2369, Data was able to enter a dream state when powered down, another process installed by his creator Dr. Soon but it was held back from Data's mind until he had advanced sufficiently to process the unusual state. This clearly shows that Data learns as a person and adapts, much as a human, growing in experience and complexity with age. This sort of artificial intelligence is still beyond us for the moment, and a limiting factor with much of what can be accomplished. The processing required to adapt and react to the environmental changes is staggering, and we're still a long, long way from creating a Zoom-type android, most notably because of how human it appears. 
although the raw level of processing power can be achieved in current supercomputer technology. Just not in sizes that would fit in a skull. Data can also become ill or compromised, but of a different nature than organic beings. For example, data operates mostly as a closed network, meaning you cannot wirelessly hack into data, although there are numerous emissions that he can detect or that can have an adverse effect on his mind, but he can still contract hostile programming or incompatible information that, eventually, he is able to overcome with the vast array of subroutines and mental abilities at his disposal. He can also become intoxicated, uh, of a sort, from the Sire 2000 polywater virus, which suggests some organic component to his function, possibly in the fluids that circulate in his veins. Overall, Data has extreme abilities that could be augmented further, but would make him less human in his design, which goes against the design ethos of the Zoom type android altogether. But interestingly, we've seen him go the other direction too, when captured by the Borg Queen he had organic skin in place of his artificial wrappings, and was able to process the new sensory input despite previously thinking it would be incompatible. Data walks a fine and uncanny line between machine and man, and is an almost unique individual in all of the Federation. Thanks for watching this deeper dive into the capabilities of our favourite Starfleet android, and I hope to see more of him, even if it's merely in flashbacks from future Trek. Until the next video, I've been Rick, and I'll see you around. Goodbye.